We continue today with chapter 20, Entering the Ark. Nothing can hurt you unless you give it the power to do so. Yet you give power as the laws of this world interpret giving. As you give, you lose. It is not up to you to give power at all. Power is of God, given by Him and reawakened by the Holy Spirit, who knows that as you give, you gain. He gives no power to sin, and therefore it has none, nor to its results as this world sees them, sickness and death and misery and pain. These things have not occurred because the Holy Spirit sees them not, and gives no power to their seeming source. Thus would he keep you free of them. Being without illusion of what you are, the Holy Spirit merely gives everything to God, who already has given and received all that is true. The untrue he has neither received nor given. Sin has no place in heaven where its results are alien and can no more enter than can their source. And therein lies your need to see your brother sinless. In him is heaven. See sin in him instead and heaven is lost to you. But see him as he is and what is yours shines from him to you. Your Savior gives you only love, but what you would receive of him is up to you. It lies in him to overlook all your mistakes, and therein lies his own salvation. And so it is with yours. It is the reawakening of the laws of God in minds that have established other laws, and given them power to enforce what God created not. Your insane laws were made to guarantee that you would make mistakes and give them power over you by accepting their results as you are just due. What could this be but madness? And is it this that you would see within your Savior from insanity? He is as free from this as you are, and in the freedom that you see in Him you see your own. For this you share. What God has given follows His laws and His alone. Nor is it possible for those who follow them to suffer the results of any other source. Those who choose freedom will experience only its results. Their power is of God, and they will give it only to what God has given, to share with them. Nothing but this can touch them, for they see only this, sharing their power according to the will of God. And thus their freedom is established and maintained. It is upheld through all temptation to imprison and to be imprisoned. It is of them who learned of freedom that you should ask what freedom is. Ask not the sparrow how the eagle soars, for those with little wings have not accepted for themselves the power to share with you. The sinless give as they received. See then the power of sinlessness within your brother, and share with him the power of the release from sin you offered him. To each who walks this earth in seeming solitude is a Savior given, whose special function here is to release him, and so to free himself. In the world of separation each is appointed separately, though they are all the same. Yet those who know that they are all the same need not salvation, and each one finds his Savior when he is ready to look upon the face of Christ and see him sinless. The plan is not of you, nor need you be concerned with anything except the part that has been given you to learn. For he who knows the rest will see to it without your help. But think not, he does not need your part to help him with the rest. For in your part lies all of it, without which is no part complete, nor is the whole completed without your part. 
The ark of peace is entered two by two, yet the beginning of another world goes with them. Each holy relationship must enter here to learn its special function in the Holy Spirit's plan, now that it shares his purpose. And as this purpose is fulfilled, a new world rises in which sin can enter not, and where the Son of God can enter without fear, and where he rests a while, to forget imprisonment, and to remember freedom. How can he enter to rest and to remember without you? Except you be there, he is not complete, and it is his completion that he remembers there. This is the purpose given you. Think not that your forgiveness of your brother serves but you two alone, for the whole new world rests in the hands of every two who enter here to rest. And as they rest, the face of Christ shines on them and they remember the laws of God, forgetting all the rest and yearning only to have his laws perfectly fulfilled in them and all their brothers. Think you when this has been achieved that you will rest without them? You could no more leave one of them outside than I could leave you and forget part of myself. You may wonder how you can be at peace when, while you are in time, there is so much that must be done before the way to peace is open. Perhaps this seems impossible to you. But ask yourself if it is possible that God would have a plan for your salvation that does not work. Once you accept his plan as the one function that you would fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you without your effort. He will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stones to trip on and no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing careless of everything, except the only purpose that you would fulfill. As that was given you, so will its fulfillment be. God's guarantee will hold against all obstacles, for it rests on certainty and not contingency. It rests on you. And what can be more certain than a son of God? And from the workbook, Lesson 161, Give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. Today we practice differently and take a stand against our anger that our fears may disappear and offer room to love. Here is salvation in the simple words in which we practice with today's idea. Here is the answer to temptation which can never fail to welcome in the Christ, where fear and anger had prevailed before. Here is atonement made complete, the world passed safely by and heaven now restored. Here is the answer of the voice for God. Complete abstraction is the natural condition of the mind but part of it is now unnatural. It does not look on everything as one. It sees instead but fragments of the whole, for thus could it invent the partial world you see. The purpose of all seeing is to show you what you wish to see. All hearing but brings to your mind the sounds it wants to hear. Thus were specifics made, and now it is specifics we must use in practicing. We give them to the Holy Spirit, that he may employ them for a purpose which is different from the one we gave to them. Yet, he can use but what we made to teach us from a different point of view, so we can see a different use in everything. One brother is all brothers. Every mind contains all minds, for every mind is one. Such is the truth. Yet do these thoughts make clear the meaning of creation? 
Do these words bring perfect clarity with them to you? What can they seem to be but empty sounds, pretty perhaps, correct in sentiment, yet fundamentally not understood nor understandable? The mind that taught itself to think specifically can no longer grasp abstraction in the sense that it is all-encompassing. We need to see a little that we can learn a lot. It seems to be the body that we feel limits our freedom, makes us suffer and last puts our outer life. Yet bodies are but symbols for a concrete form of fear. Fear without symbols calls for no response, for symbols can stand for the meaningless. Love needs no symbols being true, but fear attaches to specifics being false. Bodies attack, but minds do not. This thought is surely reminiscent of our text, where it is often emphasized. This is the reason bodies easily become fear symbols. You have many times been urged to look beyond the body, for its sight presents the symbol of love's enemy. Christ's vision does not see. The body is the target for attack, for no one thinks he hates the mind. Yet what but mind directs the body to attack? What else could be the seat of fear except what thinks of fear? Hate is specific. There must be a thing to be attacked. An enemy must be perceived in such a form he can be touched and seen and heard and ultimately killed. When hatred rests upon a thing, it calls for death as surely as God's voice proclaims there is no death. Fear is insatiable, consuming everything its eyes behold, and seeing itself in everything, compelled to turn upon itself and to destroy. Who sees a brother as a body sees him as fear's symbol, and he will attack because what he beholds is his own fear external to himself, poised to attack and howling to unite with him again. Mistake not the intensity of rage projected fear must spawn. It shrieks in wrath and claws the air in frantic hope it can reach to its maker and devour him. This do the body's eyes behold in one whom heaven cherishes, the angels love, and God created perfect. This is his reality, and in Christ's vision is his loveliness reflected in a form so holy and so beautiful that you could scarce refrain from kneeling at his feet. Yet you will take his hand instead, for you are like him in the sight that sees him thus. Attack on him is enemy to you for you will not perceive that in his hands is your salvation. Ask him but for this, and he will give it to you. Ask him not to symbolize your fear. Would you request that love destroy itself, or would you have it revealed to you and set you free? Today we practice in a form we have attempted earlier. Your readiness is closer now, and you will come today nearer Christ's vision. If you are intent on reaching it, you will succeed today. And once you have succeeded, you will not be willing to accept the witnesses your body's eyes call forth. What you will sing to you of ancient are melodies you will remember. You are not forgot in heaven. Would you not remember it? Select one brother, symbol of the rest, and ask salvation of him. See him first as clearly as you can, in that same form to which you are accustomed. See his face, his hands and feet, his clothing. Watch him smile and see familiar gestures which he makes so frequently. Then think of this. What you are seeing now conceals from you the sight of one who can forgive you all your sins, whose sacred hands can take away the nails which pierce your own, 
and lift the crown of thorns which you have placed upon your bleeding head. Ask this of him, that he may set you free. Give me your blessing, holy Son of God. I would behold you with the eyes of Christ and see my perfect sinlessness in you. And he will answer whom you called upon, for he will hear the voice for God in you and answer in your own. Behold him now, whom you have seen as merely flesh and bone, and recognize that Christ has come to you. Today's idea is your safe escape from anger and from fear. Be sure you use it instantly, should you be tempted to attack a brother, and perceive in him the symbol of your fear. And you will see him suddenly transformed from enemy to savior from the devil into Christ. Amen.